All right, boys and girls, it's been a long time since I've done a video. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> I'll get into where I've been in another video, but needless to say, I still get comments on videos I made anywhere from four to almost eight years ago now. Do you guys realize that that, that info might be a little out of date? Just throwing that out there. The biggest thing I want people to understand, because we're talking Nick's here, we're talking Lennox. And before P the free and open source only people want to lambast me for not calling it GNU Linux, don't give a shit, get over it. When I talked Linux in those videos, I talked Windows versus Linux, I talked OS X Linux and Windows, I've talked about, you know, five reasons why Linux is not a good consumer grade OS. I've talked about a lot of different things with Linux. If you look at the history of Nix over those particular times and those years, it wasn't a consumer-ready product, for the most part. Particular use cases, yes, it very much was. If it, it was Chromebooks before it was Chromebooks. If it worked on the net, you were pretty much all set. But not prior to that. Now is a different story. Because I can remember over those years, how many remember when 8.04 for Ubuntu came out and everyone was ripping out pulse to, you know, actually have working sound? How many people remember versions of Kaden Live, like 7.4, 7.5, 7.6, 7.7, 7.8, all crashing, like when you made an edit or you went to save a project? How many people remember OpenShot? Just decidingly, randomly to crash and not, you know, you have the autosave feature enabled and it not work. That's the stuff that I remember just ever so slightly. Xorg and, you know, AMD drivers and NVIDIA drivers all being terrible. NVIDIA being slightly better than AMD's uh, proprietary stuff, but AMD's open stuff being better than no, uh, than the Nuevo drivers. This is all stuff that I remember over the years. This is all stuff that I've dealt with over the years. It has held me back from jumping into Linux full time. It's always on a secondary system. It's always on a you know, laptop. I've had HDPCs running XBMC, sorry, now Kodi, on my TV and accessing local content over on NAS and various other things. It's prominent in my life, but in its specific use cases. I can honestly say now, I can jump into Linux full time. Every single laptop I have, as an example. Laptop over here runs deep in Linux, or sorry, deep in 2014. The one over there is running Ubuntu 14.04. The one that I'm using now is running elementary OS. Desktop is running a tri-boot between Linux Mint 17.1 Cinnamon. And for those that want to know if I live in a Ubuntu only world, no, my other partitions are Windows 7 and the extra Linux partition is Canonix, which is a Debian testing distro. So there you go. I live in a Debian only world. So for me, it doesn't matter. I can live in Linux now. I can do video editing in Linux. I can do po better and clearer podcasting in Linux now than I used to ever be able to. I can now play video games in Linux. This is why I still have a Windows partition. Out of people want to know how big my Steam library is. I have 400 games on Steam. About 100 of those are accessible on Linux now. So if I have an itch for gaming, I can just fire up Steam and actually double click an icon and hey look, I'm gaming. That wasn't the case in those years. It is now. I am always going to be and have been a practicality user over belief user. Do I prefer open source over proprietary stuff? Yes, I do. The reason, though, is not because of the free as in beer price. What I care about is the fact that I can look at a change log and see what's been implemented, what's been changed, what hasn't been changed and that stuff. The development is the stuff that care, I care about. I have paid for OpenShot to be better. I have paid developers because I believe they deserve to be paid. 
it shouldn't be just about a passion project. People should be paid for the passions that they have. And that is the thing. I want a career where I get paid for doing what I love. Don't you? Isn't that the goal for everybody at some point? So why not help the help that become a dream for a developer? If they want to work on, like, like if Jonathan Thomas wants to work on OpenShot full time, I'm gonna help pay that bill because I want OpenShot to be better. This free is an free software only mentality is where I get lambasted by the community the most because I don't have it. I'm a practicality user, always will be. This is something you guys have to accept. So if I say something sucks, it's because I say pr as a practicality user, it's not up to snuff. I have more than enough years in Linux to actually understand that. I've dabbled in Linux since probably 2000. For those that want to know what my first m distro was, Mandrake. Not Mandriva, Mandrake. RPM. That's how long I've been dabbling in the world of Nix. It is not something that is not spoken of in ignorance. I live it. I've lived in it. I'm living in it now. Because this video is being done with it. So, is it a practical OS now? Does it just work? For the most part, just like any other OS. It just works if, it, if it's done right. Windows doesn't share shit to just work. I don't know how many systems I've had borked because of some stupid update. Same thing with Nix. OS X, yeah, that's a little more limited, so uh, it's less borked, but there are times where I've had to drop a CLI because something's not been right now. Driver screw something up or whatnot, but I drop the CLI about as much on Nix now as I do Windows or OS X. And that's really just the reality. So for me, it is now a practical OS. I live in it. And I'm glad to. I prefer the choice and I prefer to exercise that choice. I don't like the one size fits all Apple or uh, Apple or Microsoft are taking. It's why I run different distros, it's why I run different desktops, it's why I exercise that choice. So the biggest issue I still take with Linux isn't from a technical point of view. The issue I still take is with the community. The community is Linux's biggest downfall. When I say I'm a practicality user, I just want to install the damn OS. Don't sit there and tell me to take your distro of choice, say Arch or some Arch distro, and shove it down my throat when it is not best suited for me. Then you can talk, you know, Gent to an Archer, the best way to completely optimize a system, and you can talk about that these are the best things for choice and all this other stuff. That's great. Not my distro. I just want something that I throw in a flash drive or a disk, and in 20, 30 minutes, depending on, you know, the distro, that it's just installed and it's up and running, and I can have a functional system. That is the mentality that people need to understand that people hate about the Linux community. My choice might not be your choice, but it's the best choice for me. As a community, though, can you accept that? Or are you just going to keep riding the high horse and saying, my choice is better than yours, and my distro can beat up your distro crap that the community always seems to do? Whereas we should simply just be celebrating the fact that we have great technology and that we're all running on that great technology. And the programs I use, the proprietary or whatnot, doesn't fucking matter. That's where it really boils down to. Now if you can stop being like a religious zealot and shoving your beliefs down my throat, then we can talk. Until then, I'm not going to deal with the free software only zealots. I'm not going to deal with the, the RMS type mentality. That is where I draw the line. Just because it's free, as in beer, doesn't mean I'm not going to pay for it. 
doesn't mean I don't believe in using the right solution for the problem. Maybe if the rest of the community understood that approach, it might not be uh, that 1.2 that everyone seems to think it is, why I say it's 3 to 5. You want to conquer the desktop like we've conquered mobile. Maybe the community needs to get out of its own way and start actually thinking about the user.